Hey everyone, fantasy football, jibber jabber, week 11, right? Jesus, Harren, this is this season flying by, just like everyone's getting older, when this season just keeps on flying by. How are you this week? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I hope everybody enjoyed my Christian, my Christian Kirk pick last week. That Huge. probably made you a whole bunch of money. It was only $4,500 on DraftKings, and he ended up scoring over 50 points for you. So that's back-to-back -back wide receivers. I have absolutely bullseyed for you week to week. And I absolutely nailed Kyler Murray, much to your surprising, surprisingness of uh, 6500 bucks. He got you 44, uh, 44 points, so that's a hell of a pick uh, as Stay tuned. Well. I am off the Kyler Murray bandwagon this week. Stay tuned. Are you really? I was the ball. Well, you'll hear mine as well. Uh, by the way, how funny is that? I and I also had Darius Slayton, 34 points. Huge sleeper. That's right. And I argued that Golden Tate would have been the better pick. And uh, we both went look pretty damn smart in both those picks. Yeah. Darius Slayton's I, turning out to be pretty good. Late round he might round. be the next Victor Cruz. Yeah, well, Victor Cruz wasn't even drafted. Let's hope he, he's got a little more longevity than DC. But, uh, yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah, definitely, definitely softens the blow of uh, OBJ, huh? Yeah. Oh, what another mess that was last night. We'll get into that. By the way, funny, after, after I have trashed uh, Kyle Rudolph all year, what does he do? This is his two-touchdown game a year when I had him in the hot trash. Never fails. So, you know what? No one batted a 1,000, including the great Babe Ruth. So, neither will go T, the crowd. But, so. uh, what do we do with Juju Smith-Schuster? I sat him last night and looked smart yeah. doing so. Yeah. That was, a, that was a rough go for the Steelers. I had the Steelers in the under, so I'm starting off the week one and one. But I tell you what, let's get to the picks first. We're going to blow right through it. Cold cash, I'll kick it off. I have uh, my cold cash quarterback this week for $6,400, Derek Carr. Bengals defense, defense is bad. How bad is it? It's so bad that Michael Bay said he wants to dis direct a story about it, but with robots as the actor. Bengals. Would have worked better with Zack Snyder. Would have worked better with Zack Snyder. Bengals are fifth in points allowed to fantasy quarterbacks, and just two quarterbacks have not scored 21 or more against them. And that was just in weeks one and two. Raiders with three extra days to prep. And the Bengals defense is going to need a chemical cleanup crew after the Raiders make a German Scheiser porn all over them. David Carr, love them. All right. Give me Zach the Dak Prescott going up against the Detroit that does not have its captain. Oh, captain, my captain, and Matt Stafford. He's doubtful this week, which almost definitely means he's out. He's got broken uh, bones in his back. Give me Dak Prescott at the helm with the uh, NFL's number five ranked offense Dak Prescott against Detroit is my pick of the week at quarterback Cole cash running back $6,100 Tevin Coleman the Niners have more gaping holes on offense than any of the gay bars in San Francisco Sanders okay. Brita Kittle all questionable or even doubtful who's gonna get those targets and touches why well, they targets and touches the title of the next Jeffrey Epstein biography fun fact Oh, Cardinals, okay. last three road games allowed five touchdowns running backs take the guy who's gonna get all the touches in that offense, Seven Coleman, $600. You're saying Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon versus Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs run defense is incredibly porous. If they're going to have any chance against this Pat Mahomes juggernaut offense, they're going to have to grind it out. Phillip Rivers can't win in a shootout anymore, even though they got rid of the ball and chain. Notice Ken Wizen Hunt. Melvin Gordon has been coming on. He looked amazing last week, Kevin. One cut up the field. Had seven missed tackles last week. That tells me that he's back in regular season form. What I think is the third best running back in the entire NFL, Melvin Gordon, going up against Kansas City, only 7200 bucks. Love him. Lock him in. Amazing how a few weeks ago we were just shitting on him, and now we're like, we love him. Uh, well, I mean, this is, what, fourth week, right? It's his fourth week. He's back in shape. I know. I have as my wide receiver, Cold Cash, DJ Moore, 5900 bucks, back-to-back 100-yard games, and faces the sixth most lenient defense of wide receivers. He has had 15 points in four out of five games. He is getting Isaiah Oliver on coverage, probably, who allows an astounding .53 fantasy points per snap. That's like dark Phoenix awful. By the way, how did the last two X-Men movies suck so badly? I guess when Brian Singer got out Social as a pedophile, that was his trip tonight. Justice. Ugh, terrible. Hey, man, uh, you go woke, you go broke. That's the saying. D DJ Moore, 1500 bucks. Love him. Versus Atlanta, that's a great pick. Thank you. I agree. I like that. I like that pick a lot there, Kevin. Now, I'm not going to pick him, but I'm very interested to see what happens with DJ Shark going up against Indian uh, Indianapolis this week. Since... Do, 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 do. 
since they have Nick Foles back. So I'm very interested to see what happens there. I'm not going to pick him. I need to see that. And uh, I can't pick him because I can't pick this guy because he's the third ranked wide receiver this year. But I absolutely love. Love, love, love Michael Thomas against Tampa Bay this week. But yeah, he's not no uh, Lattimore, that's why. Yeah, you can't pick him. But the guy that I am going to pick just outside of the top, and, and but I think this is the week we're going to see Nook Hopkins come back against Baltimore. They're going to have to score some points to stay in the game. Give me Hopkins. He's only 8300 bucks To give you an idea of how far he's fallen, Hill, $8,300. Stephen Diggs, 7700 Cooper Cup, 7700 Kenny Galladay, 7600 right? Look at these guys. Look at the amount that they're spending. You can have Hopkins this week for only $200 more than you can have Chris Godwin. I like Hopkins against Baltimore. That's crazy. And Baltimore's defense is not good. Let's go tight end. Greg Olson. Greg the leg, 3900 bucks. Take everything I said about the Ew. Atlanta defense and apply. Ew. No, no, no. You can throw the flag all you want to, but I've got numbers Ew. in my corner. He had a great week last week, 8 for 98, and now faces a defense that has allowed 12 PPR in four of the last five to tight ends, and he is half the cost of a premier tight end and can easily be a top 10 tight end against the stinky Falcons defense. 3900 bucks. Lug Greg Olson this week. Ew. I'm a big Greg Olson fan. I don't think he's got back-to-back weeks on him anymore. I'm hoping that Bruce Arians learned his lesson last week and he saw what an unbelievable weapon he has in O.J. Howard after most people picked him in the top five rounds of the draft, six rounds of the draft, five, six. They thought this is going to be the year. He's the most talented physical freak playing the tight end position in the NFL. In the NFL. He had uh, should have had two touchdowns last week. One was called back for a holding. He goes up against very difficult New Orleans offense. And the thing I like about O.J. Howard, uh, New Orleans defense, the thing I like about O.J. Howard is the two outsides are always difficult with New Orleans. Uh, they take away the wide receivers. The middle of the field for New Orleans is where you have to live. It's the only way that, that, that you can win, and O.J. Howard should win there. I like O.J. Howard's 5,300 this week. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do, too. Not bad flex my flex is josh jacobs here's the number for you 173 that's the number of times i've peed since being on a three-day juice cleanse uh besides that also 173 the number of yards allowed per game by the Bengals defense this game is going to be uglier than grandma porn guys get ready for a heavy run game after this one gets out of hand fast 6900 bucks josh jacobs absolutely positively love him he has scored in six straight weeks no brainer let's ride that hot hand Devin Singletary going up against the resurgent Miami team. They're coming up with a tough loss against Cleveland. I like Devin Singletary running the football against the weak Miami front set. Carson Wentz is my hot trash quarterback player of the week. Why? Because he has scored fewer than 17 points in four of his last five, including three in a row. The, uh, the, uh, the Pats the are on the buy, off the buy, excuse yeah. me. And Belichick, by the way, is a lusty 66% off the buy. I love yep. everyone trying to grab Philly plus a three and a half. I disagree. I would not start him at all. Uh, Lamar Jackson is the only quarterback with more than 12 points against the Pats. Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz avoid the clap. Jimmy Dugan. Yep, I'm giving you a two for this week, Kev. You get a two for hot trash quarterback out of me. Jared Goff versus Chicago, and you get Kyler Murray against San Francisco. San Francisco, now everybody said that uh, a lot of people, I shouldn't say everybody, were saying San Francisco was exposed last week by Russell Wilson. Listen, exposed nothing. They were down their top wide receiver, Emmanuel Sanders. They were down their top running back, Matt Breida. They were down uh, to their third. George Kittle, he's out too. They were down there third string light, right tackle, and they were down George Kittle. And all they were was a rookie making one out of two kicks away from staying perfect. I absolutely love that defense. I love what John Lynch has done there. Remember early in the season, Kevin, back when we had a studio, back when we were <laughs> you know, act, at least acting like we were professional? And I told Kevin, what was it, week one or week two, I really like this San Francisco defense. And you were like, buddy, they're trash. Uh, what, what was it? Richard Sherman's washed mm-hmm. up. Next thing you know, they're playing like 30, 85 bears. I love them coming out, out of the preseason. I absolutely love what they were building there. I thought if Bosa was even half of what, what they said he was going to be, this defense was going to be absolutely impenetrable. You got a rookie quarterback going up against that. I don't like that. Kyler Murray, they're going to be hungry coming off a loss. And Jared Goff folds like a cheap beach chair under pressure. and He's got to go up against Khalil Mack. Jared Goff, 
7800 bucks this week. Yeah. And you got Kyler Murray at 76. Just to give you an idea of who else is in that range, Jameis Winston at 7600 Tom Brady, 7800 coming off a bye. The exact same price as Jared Goff against Chicago is Tom Brady against that weak Philadelphia, Philadelphia secondary coming off a bye. Josh Allen, 7800 right? Who is making these prices? It's absolutely asinine that Jared Goff is the same as that. That is an awful oof, oof. You're right about the, the, the Niners defense, what I said. The only thing that scares me this week is they played five quarters and on Monday night, they might be a little more gassed than we think. That's one the team. one thing that scares me about that pick. But all right, I'm not going to throw a flag on that. Young uh, teams hot are not trash. Lose back to back within their, their division. Oh, I'm not saying they're going to lose. I, I think they may. Well, I think Arizona may even cover, but I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're going to lose. By the way, they're the only team so far who has at least pushed if you took a total for the year. Their number was eight. So they've pushed at least. All they need to do is win one more game, and that's free money. But you can't lose if you took over. Mm -hmm. Sony Michelle, yet again, 4900 bucks. Why? Because the Eagles have allowed six rushing touchdowns all year, but allow 75,000 garbage people in their stadium every Sunday. But give the devil their due. They have a stout rush defense. Only Zeke Elliott has gotten over 63 yards with them all year long. And after that piss-poor debacle against the Ravens, where Michelle only had 30 total yards why would you trust him i would not let him tr i would not trust him to run the dishwasher let alone the football sony michelle garbage stay in that same game actually you know what we're not going to do that because how you, you have howard in your lineup you suck anyway but give me <laughs> uh we switch it up actually i'm going to go with your pick from last week a surprising win for you was ronald jones last week ronald jones back-to-back -back weeks of scoring touchdowns yeah. that ends this week against new orleans He's, he's cheap at $6,400. He's projected at 9.1 points. Ronald Jones is not going to have any, any time against that tough Cam Hayward-led uh, front seven in, in, uh, in New Orleans. Ronald Jones is my fade this week. Back. All right. I see that. I actually sat him in one of my leagues as well. So we're, uh, we're simpatico. Wide receiver, call it hot trash. Alshon Jeffrey, 4800 bucks. Why? He gets Stephon Gilmore, who's going to make Alshon look more like happy Gilmore. Pats have let one wide receiver score, and that was a fluky play again with Golden Tate in the Giant game. Pats still allow the fewest points to perimeter receivers. No touchdowns for Alshon Jeffrey since week six, and a combined 22 PPR in the last three games. Just like an Eagle fan with books, I'll pass. I'll pass on Allen Robinson because he's got Mitch Trubisky as his quarterback and Jalen Ramsey as his opposition. 7200 bucks after back-to-back -back big weeks. Allen Robinson comes back down to life and remembers who he is this week. Fade Allen Robinson going up against the Rams. Love that call. You'll see why later. David Montgomery, $5,700. Who's buying him? He's in one big run all year, 3.21 yards per carry, and only six scores allowed by the number six rush defense of the Rams. I'd rather go to an orgy in Madison, Wisconsin than take David Montgomery as a flex. Absolutely not. Adrian Peterson, he's been, he's been absolutely playable since Callahan took over. He's been getting big-time touches, averaging over 17 touches a game since Jay Gruden was fired. Now, he goes up against a bad Jets team, but that bad Jets team is actually second in the entire league against the run, Kevin. Did you know number that? Number one, actually, number one. Well, uh, I saw they were second, so number one against the run. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you I know that. Adri Adrian Peterson against the number one rush defense in the NFL. Just like Father Time has come for him, so has Father Fade. Sleepers, Marquise Brown, 5,600 bucks. Why? Texans have allowed 296 passing yards and average a game, and the fourth most to wide receivers. Eight, eight, eight receivers have scored at least 80 yards. And for only a paltry 5,600 bucks, you can have Marquise Brown. I like him, and that's the guy that, that um, Jackson's going to look for besides uh, Mark Andrews. I like it. I also like Jamison Crowder coming back home against the same Washington Redskins we were just talking about. Redskins can't cover anybody. Daniel Jones threw for over 300 yards and four touchdowns against them. Sam Darnold coming off a big week against the Giants. He's been looking to Jamison Crowder. He had 11 targets last week. I would expect the same type of volume. And Demarius Thomas has kind of evened them out a little bit. You can't just take Crowder away. Bet two bad teams play, but the Jets are coming off a win. I like Jamison Crowder this week. 6500 bucks. Why not? Uh, this, is, should, this pick should have been my number one sleeper, actually. This is your waiver wire winner of the week. I'm surprised you didn't go with the number one as well. Brian Hill, 4800 bucks. 
the running back for Atlanta this week, and he gets to face a Carolina defense that has allowed 13 touchdowns in the last five games to running backs, 17 total touchdowns for the year, and 11 running backs have scored at least 10-plus points against that stinky poo Panthers defense. Did you see Aaron Jones last week? I did. Uh, I had him as one of my sleepers. Brian Hill, $4,800. Get him in your lineup at a dirt cheap price for a starting running back. Please, Ali Ali Oxen free. Yeah, I'll take that same, your same uh, theory on DJ Moore, and I'm going to apply it to Curtis Samuel this week against Atlanta. I think this is going to have to be a big time boat race type of a game. You're going to be looking at both teams scoring over 30 points. I like Curtis Samuel going up against maybe the worst secondary the NFL has ever seen in Atlanta. Right. That's a, yeah. There you go. That was other guys looking at too. Third one was your pick, and that was Devin Singletary for all the above reasons. And let's also add he's averaging 6.4 yards a carry, and he's now a three down back. You don't see Frank Gore in there near as much as you used to in the beginning of the year. Devin Singletary is healthy, and I agree with you. Uh, that he's going to be a, a top-notch player in a game uh, that should be one in the trenches. Josh Brown. If I like Josh Allen, you know I'm going to like Josh Brown. Josh Brown going up against the Miami team, who's playing really hard. And I think, Brian, this is the thing that would, when people talk in New York about firing Gase or firing Sherman, I look at Flores and I say, this is why you fire both of them and you fire them soon. Because it's about what you're able to see. It's about tangible growth. And you can see right. tangible growth down in Miami, but they still don't have NFL caliber players. The uh, Bills coming off a bad loss. They can't lose again in an AFC wild card. It's starting to get packed down there. A lot of five and six, six and five teams. If they lose, they're going to fall to six and five. They're going to be right there with them. They have an absolute must win in division game. Give me Josh Brown. He's projected at 12 and a half points and only $5,900 on draft. This week, the Black Betty's girls will try for our sixth win in seven weeks with the Buffalo minus five and a half in Miami. The Dolphins' upset win last week has made the line more reasonable this week, but they're still straight up trash. Take the bills and get paid. Here you go. It's time for a little free money. Two and one last week on the show, four and two overall with the Patreon picks, putting me at a total for the year of 39 and 24. Pretty goddamn good. Uh, this is an all-teaser week for you, my good man. The first teaser I have, and this is going to make you – you're going to go, this is why I go, the crowd is sharp yet again. First teaser, I am teasing the Miami Dolphins up to 12 and a half points, getting 12 and a half at home. Who are the Buffalo Bills laying six and a half on the road? Answer, you got to be kidding me. I know they, they barely blew it in Cleveland last week. Dolphins are 5-0 and oh against the spread of late. They are playing with purpose. And Buffalo has not blown anyone out all year. That's the first leg of the teaser. The second leg of the teaser, Houston Texans in Baltimore. Houston off the bye. Here's a fun fact. Deshaun Watson, the last time he lost a game by more than seven points was in high school. Really? I am take Yes, sir. And the Ravens, a surprising one and five at home against the spread. I am getting 10 points in a game the Texans may, may win outright. And the Dolphins getting 12 and a half at home against the Bills, who really aren't that impressive despite their record. Is a paper Tigers with a six and four? Uh, give me the both dogs plus double digits. Well, I'm going to see your teaser and I'm going to raise you another teaser. First half of the teaser is going to be. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right now they're sitting at five and a half. I'm going to tease them up to 11 and a half. <coughs> New Orleans on the road. There's some people in New Orleans that are calling for Teddy Bridgewater to take the team back over, believe it or not. Who's no calling for that? Home. Drew Brees does not look good since, he can't, since he's come back. Uh, so well, I'm taking Tampa Bay at home, getting 11 and a half. No Marshawn Lattimore, remember? Yeah. And I'm also I'm going to tease the Chicago Bears. Right now, it has – L.A. is uh, giving seven points to the Bears. I'm going to tease that sucker all the way down to 13. I don't think Jared Goff is 13 points better than anybody in the league, even if their name is Mitch Trubisky. So, Chicago Bears uh, plus 13 and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers plus 11 and a half. Funny you talk about that Bears game. Here's teaser number two. I am taking uh, I'm taking that over under and teasing it up to 46. You mean to tell me – Two teams with top five defenses 
and the Bears at the bottom five offense are going to combine for more than 46. Not on my watch. No, mm. thank you. And I'm also going to take the Jets and tease them up to plus eight. The Skins are still trotting out Haskins, and they haven't scored an offensive touchdown in three games. As you mentioned before, Jets, best rush D in the NFL. They're playing for something now. I don't know if this is a distraction or not, but they've already announced this year that they're going to keep Adam Gase no matter what. So I think the Jets are going to play. And, again, the Skins, are they're off the bye. And you hate Adrian Peterson. And what's the one thing that they're going to try and do is run the ball. Do you think any of those Skins receivers are going to do anything? Best QBR rating for Haskins is 61.1. Absolutely not. Jets plus eight and the Bears under 46. Teaser number two. Now I'm going to go straight up on a bet. I like that bet. I'm going to go straight up. You got Bill Belichick coming off a bye, going up against the disappointing Carson Wentz led Philadelphia Eagles, and they're only laying three and a half. No thanks. I think that they're seven point win here. New England going up against Philadelphia Eagles coming off a bye. Bill Belichick off a bye. Uh, I, you know what? Do you know what Bill Belichick is in his New England career off a bye, Kevin? Sixty six percent. Yeah, 14, 14 and five. He's the best coach in NFL history. Give me that, and, he, and he's only laying three and a half. If they hadn't gotten crushed by Baltimore last week, this would be a two-score spread. Give me the three and a half, free money. The only thing that scares me that with all they don't have that as much of an offense as they used to. They're going to have to air, well, again airing out. I'm going Phil Dorsett in one of my leagues just because that secondary is we said a uh, a dumpster fire in a tire fire. So. <laughs> Not a bad one. I, I, I definitely see that happening. Last but not least, teaser number three. This, usually I've, I'm doing a lot of unders of late, but here's where we're going to go over, and we're going to go over pretty damn hard. I, first teaser, as you kind of touched before, I think it's an aerial show down there in Tampa. I love the over. You're going to take that down to 43 and a half. Again, that game is easily going to be, what, 31-24? Well, putting you ahead of that pace of 43 and a half by taking over Tampa Bay, uh, 43 and a half. The next one is the game in Mexico City, where I think two defenses who aren't that great, but especially the Chiefs. I'm going to go over 46 Chargers Chiefs. I think the Chiefs have got, you know, they got Mahomes back. They're going to be just fine on offense, and the Chargers seem to be finding their way as well. I think that 46, that's 20. If you could get to 24, 27 21 that's a hit and I think that's an easy easy thing to do again with the Chiefs being so awful and the Chiefs have hit like five out of seven I think it was uh, on, on the overs Chiefs over 46 Saints over 43 and a half teaser number three now the Cowboys are only one and three on the road and that one is against the lowly lowly Giants so you don't really like the Cowboys on the road but you gotta be kidding me with Jeff Driscoll at quarterback, it's only a four-and-a-half-point spread. I don't know about that one. I think that the Cowboys going up against the Detroit Lions in Detroit. It's not like Detroit is some kind of massive home field advantage that I'm aware of here. I love the Cowboys giving four-and-a-half points to a backup quarterback in the Detroit Lions. Give me the Cowboys at the Lions. Can I just tell you how scary that was? I had the Lions in a teaser, and I went off like on a hedge it with another teaser, and they ended up covering backdoor late because I was getting eight-and-a-half. And Driscoll actually managed to uh, sneak that back door in for the teaser for yours truly. Oh. Fantastic stuff, my friends. And uh, where can we find you this weekend? Where, where do you want to shout out promotion-wise? This weekend, I am actually filming all weekend, so I'm not going to be available this weekend. But if I can, if people are uh, available, I just added shows at the Hartford Funny Bone November 30th and at uh, – Boston Labs, December 1st. So if anybody is listening in the great white north there, I'll be in Connecticut on the 30th. I'll be in uh, Boston on the 1st. And then uh, I may take the holidays off, Kev, and then come well, back for January. Yeah, we're not going to – by the way, for all you listeners, we're not going to have a show next week. I'm in Disney World for work slash fun. So I'll throw up my picks. You throw up your picks in the, on, on the Facebook page. You guys can see who our picks are, but only on the Facebook page. So no actual show. KevinGoatee.com, Gutting the Sacred Cow podcast. Give that a listen. Gutting the Sacred Cow on uh, iTunes as well. You're going to hear the newest episode come up. That's it, Kevin Goatee, Gerard Heron, Fantasy Football, Jibber Jabber. We're going to keep the free money rolling, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep on sharing with your friends, and we'll catch you soon. Take care.